Hi, it's Dia. I'm going to continue to color Penelope today. Well, actually, I'm not going to color Penelope specifically, but I'm going to continue to color her house. And what I'm, this is going to be really basic today, and I'm going to just do background. And I figured I would um, show you this just because when I, when I first did the top part of the house right here, I used the color violet and it looked okay. Um, but it wasn't quite enough of something. So I wanted to, I wanted to show you this because I just noticed this is, this is violet by itself. And this is violet after I blended and added a couple of other colors. Um, and this is really basic paper too. I printed it out on purpose on just regular printer paper. So people could see that you don't have to use expensive paper. You don't have to use expensive pencils to make it look really good. You might, you might just have to work a little bit more, but you know what? In reality, you kind of have to, you kind of have to do it anyway. Whoops. Just going to make sure this is still even. Okay. Now, this part was done in violet. So as soon as I find that, right here. That was the first layer, as you can see. I've gone over it a couple times. I blended it a little bit. But it still looks less rich. So what I did was take crimson in polychromos and I went over the top of it and it added just a really nice depth to it. And for some reason it helps to blend it also. So there's less texture and I just, I love the color that it creates. Uh, what would I, what would I call this color? Mm. I don't know. Uh, let me, let me think. Violet Rose, maybe? There's a little piece in there that I didn't do. The violet, but that's okay. I'm going to go back to the violet. I'm sure this is still centered. And I'm just going to continue. Now, I'm, I wanted to show you this also because I start out with a relatively sharp pencil, as you can see the point. It's pretty sharp and I always have this nearby. This is the uh, paper castell sharpener. It has three different size openings, color grip and the two universals on the bottom. Um, I do use an electric pencil sharpener if I have a lot to take care of at once. But if I'm gonna do a video, I like to just have that nearby because first of all, it's noiseless and it does make a really nice point. So if anybody's ever looking for one of those um, sharpeners that are portable and that holds the shavings inside, I would highly recommend the Faber-Castell. So this is the first layer of color, obviously. Um, and I try to make it even, and I like using the Polychromos pencils because they are wax-based. I'm sorry, no, they're oil-based. The wax-based, they're beautiful, um, but they can be hard to layer. And I like to layer color, as you can see from the area that I did over here, and almost all the other areas that I'm going to color. I, I end up adding and sometimes erasing and there's no wax buildup. 
with oil pencils. So like I was saying, I like to not go very lightly, but I don't try to lay down all the color at once. And I know some really excellent colorists that do it all at, all at once. You know, they go, they push very hard first time around and it works for them. This works for me, so I'm just passing on some info. What I do try to do is make it even. So when I do go over it, um, when I do go over it with another color, I don't have to repeat too much or blend too much. I try to, I try to get it nice and easy. Even, uh, I'm sorry, I try to get it nice and even, even without blending. It makes it makes everything easier. I have a lot of little detail areas over here. Like there's a little moon charm hanging from the roof. There's a little mushroom over here. So I have to wear my, I have to wear my strong glasses so I can see these areas. again to the crimson once again in my last video I showed that one of the colors was called mauve and to me it looked very violet and the violet to me looks very purple and in this case this Faber Castell pencil is called crimson and it looks very fuchsia to me but I'm not a color naming expert so I'm gonna leave that to the talented people at Faber Castell so I'm going over the area that I just did, and I'm gonna go over the whole thing again, but this time with the Polychromos Crimson. I'm pushing, uh, well, I'm using about the same pressure as I used for the Violet, but I'm going over a few more times because the layers start to build and it adds really nice dimension to the color. Kind of like when you're putting on makeup, if you just try to do everything all at once, it kind of comes out like a, not a blob, but it, it's too opaque you can't see anything that comes from underneath. So when you layer, when you use colored pencils, the same thing happens. You get to see the colors from underneath. You get to see even a little tiny bit of the white from the paper or whatever color paper that you're that you're using. Some people use some people prefer and print out on um shaded paper, either a light gray or an off-white, so they can highlight with white easier. I prefer pure white paper, and my books are printed on pure white paper. I'm being real careful to not get crimson on the moon charm. And now, over here around the flowers, I'm a little less careful because the flowers have some of that color in there. So you can see at this point that this color is getting closer to the color that I'm trying to achieve up here. I 
I know this is really basic, but I thought that if you're coloring this anyway, meaning this picture, it might be some it might be fun to have somebody to color with. So I figure I'm gonna do the whole picture this this way. Um I'll probably do it for five more minutes and then And then uh, I'll, I'll end this video and do a little bit more tomorrow. Now I'm gonna take a darker purple. Actually, this is called Blue Violet, which I used on the top also. And on this side. And I'm gonna add some of this color around the edges because darker colors recede and if you use a darker version of a similar color it looks like a shadow and it's a very good replacement for black or gray a lot of people use black and gray for shadows you don't have to and shadows are shadows can be different densities or for for lack of a better word depths um, you know, sometimes shadows are very dark, very deep, and they're truly black. Sometimes they're more subtle, and it just almost looks like a darker version of the same color. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. This part is a little, this part is located underneath this twirly plant. So I'm making it darker and I'm gonna bring the shadow even over the rose because it would also be um, within the shadow of this twirly vine if the light was coming from this direction. Same thing here, a little bit darker. I'm gonna also make it a little bit darker right here because this is the edge of the windowsill. So it adds a little bit of depth there because once again, if the light's coming from this direction, it would cast a shadow in this direction. I'm going a little bit around the edges here, not as much as this side because there wouldn't be that much of a shadow. Little bit over here. I'll extend it a little tiny bit too because that's probably how the shadow would fall. I'm going to go around here, around these little roses. It helps them stand out. And once again, it shows where the shadows would be. This part of this twirly plant isn't colored in yet, but I'm still going to add the shadow because I'm, I'm currently doing it. This doesn't quite look as deep. Let's see, let's take a closer look. It doesn't quite as, this side doesn't look as deep as this side yet, so I'm just gonna go over one more time. I'm going back to Violet Faber-Castell once again. And this time I am going to push a little bit harder. Now, also, if you push hard, you burnish. And what burnishing basically is, is not only making it darker, but it adds a little bit of a shine to the surface and it changes the texture. So it's, it's very saturated in color and it, it almost adds like a glossy sheen to the top, which can be really cool for different textures. 
um, on the outside of the house. I'm not quite sure what the outside of this house is supposed to be considering it's purple. Um, but for me, it works. So this, you know, this is kind of smooth. This area obviously is wood in the door. So there's much more details. And I think I'm going to go over that again. I might print a copy of this out and uh, uh, do a video of basically how to make wood look real over here too. You know, how to make the, how to make these little um, shutters stand out. So once again, oops, the purple areas are almost done and you, and you get an idea of how to make an area that's all purple have a little more depth to it. It, it just doesn't look like one solid color. Anyway, that's it for today. Just a quickie video. I'm glad you joined me. Um, I, I hope you liked it. I hope you join me tomorrow. Um, I'll probably be doing some plants tomorrow. So get your greens ready. Thank you. Um, if you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe below. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, and here on YouTube. So thanks again, and I'll see you soon. Bye.